Hi, this is Tony from Matt, the Mid Atlantic Paranormal Project. I have with me Shane, our tech manager. And Hi, guys. Tonight, we're actually going to go just through uh, 2020, the year in review, uh, talk about some of our favorite things that we came across, some of our limitations because of the pandemic, um, the 2020 curse, and uh, maybe talk about some things that we're looking forward to in this new year. Hey, Shane, you want to start us off? Well, Happy New Year, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. Um, we are excited to really bring you a lot of new content this year. Um, we're going to start off with uh, our, I guess, our best location. Yeah, sounds good. Our, okay. our best location. So for me, our best location was uh, actually a private residence. Uh, someone called us in. Um, the house was vacant. We've talked about this so many times. I feel like it's, I don't know. I, <laughs> I hate to keep bringing it up, but uh, I had my first paranormal uh, uh, personal experience this year, um, and it was at this private residence, and I actually had something whisper in my ear, hi, uh, we'll play that clip right here, so you can listen to it. Hi, we heard you. to see you. I heard that. You heard it say the same thing, right? Hi. Mm -hmm. Every hair on my arms and neck and head is standing up right now. Mm -hmm. So there you go. There's the clip. Um, it, it was it was uh, very eye-opening. Uh, it was a really, excuse me for saying this, but it was a butt-puckering moment for me. Um, it, it, you almost can't believe it's happening. Um, there's, it, my brain was trying to catch up with everything that was going on. Um, there was nothing there. There was clearly nothing there. And you could hear the high. And not only did I hear the high, but Keijo heard the high as well. And she was in a different, uh, I was on the floor setting up a piece of equipment and she was actually standing up, setting up another piece of equipment. And to her, it sounded the same, you know, the same tone that I heard. Um, but when we listened to the recording, it was clearly different than what we'd heard in our ear. So really cool personal experience this year. And for me, um, it was in Ellesmere, Delaware. That's, that's my Best location for 2020. So that's mine, Tony. What do you got? Um, I agree with you. I think the Osmer House was uh, very intriguing. Uh, we came across a lot of evidence. The homeowners were very happy and pleased uh, with what we were able to present. Um, thankfully, they were able to finally sell the house soon after our investigation. Uh, wish we could get back in there. So hopefully we can contact the new owners and see if they're having anything still happening. Um, that's still our goals for this year, uh, for 2021. I um, also like some of the new things that we've done. Um, we always done stuff up near me in the Delaware area. Um, got to venture more towards uh, your hometown. Uh, we did the Brunswick Museum, which I thought was different for us, as well as going to Harper's Ferry. I know you've been to Harper's Ferry many times. It was my first time. A beautiful place. Um, I like the interaction we had with the portal. Um, and I think my name was actually called out a couple of times uh, after my name was mentioned to do some EVP questions. Um, so that was very interesting for me. Um, but, you know, they, they, all, they all are very interesting when we're there. Uh, they become more interesting when we hear the evidence afterwards. Um, so I know um, that, you know, we'll continue to keep getting more. But right now, off the top of my head, they're the ones that stand up the most. Yeah, that's a good, that, those are good ones. Um, so the next thing on the list for 2020 is uh, best and I know this is kind of this kind of the same thing, or it couldn't be the same thing, but best investigation. Um, just because the location is good, um, sometimes the investigation might not go the way you expected it to. So we have on our list best investigation. So I'll let you start this one off. And uh, it all depends. It doesn't have to be the investigation that pulled off the best evidence. To me, it's where the team pulls together, and we more or less pull off the impossible, or we impress ourselves. You know, of how we got set up, how we break down how everybody communicated. Um, yes, the Ellsberg home did very well. Um, I think when we went back to um, the inn that's on the, um, along the Chesapeake and um, 
uh, what do you call it, the northern shore, eastern shore, the eastern shore of Maryland. We went there with a full team. It was one of the first times we had everybody out there. Um, we had everybody from the MAP Academy or the MAP, the MAP team that come out with us and we're able to communicate together and we were able to pull it off uh, even during the pandemic. I think it was close to 10 of us um, actually going around and we were able to break off into teams. I think we had the same crew in a residential in up to Maryland. Um, a lot of people for a small area, but we were able to break into teams. Some did investigations outside in the nearby cemetery. I think there's two cemeteries, a newer cemetery and older cemetery, and then the private residence alone. So working together as a team, I thought that was very, very nice. Um, so that's what I think is when I hear, you know, what's your best investigation? So not what we pulled off, but what we were able to do together and communicate as a team. Yeah, I agree. Um, you know, we spent a lot of time this year, even though because of the pandemic, it was uh, it was really hard um, to, you know, to, to have that social distancing um, aspect to what, you know, what we all do, we all investigate. But um, we really tried to branch out this year. Um, we, we did a lot of collaboration with other groups. Um, we even brought uh, more members into our own team and really got to see what they could bring to the table. Um, but I think this year was a really good year um, for us and growth and what we do and, and seeing others' skills and, and what they bring to the table. We were able to um, meet up with the Mappy Group out of West Virginia. Um, we always have a good time with them. Um, they're a good host, and they actually had, actually attended our first social meetup during a pandemic. I know, but we did it. Everybody was safe. We social distanced, um, and we wore masks. and And I think it was a really good um, experience, even though we almost died and climbing the hills of Harper's Ferry. Um, it was it was just a really good time. So I agree with you. I think you know we've met a lot of new friends this year. Um, there's just been so many um, different folks that we've met at these meetups. Um, I really encourage folks to get out there and try to meet up with other groups. It's nice to see other folks' style. It's, a, it's nice to see what other people bring um, as far as equipment, um, as far as just th their demeanor. Um, some things you're going to like and some things you're not going to like. I have to say we've been fortunate. There's not been too many folks we've met that were like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> How dare they? Um, it's actually been, you know, quite um, rewarding to see how they how they investigate. So I think last year, 2020, was really the highlight for me of, of meeting so many new people and being able to investigate with them. And must I say, you know, we talked about the best locations and the best investigations. And one of our goals for, for 2020 and actually 2019 and 2018 and, and even before then, is we try to do one investigation per month. And this year was really, or this past year was really tough. Um, you know, trying to get 12 investigations. We do a lot of private residents. Um, we did pay for a few this year, but we were able to actually accomplish 12 investigations and none of them were the same. So uh, if we counted Harper's Ferry, we'd probably have 15 or 16, but we're gonna count Harper's Ferry once. And uh, I think it was a real successful year. I agree. I agree. You know, you know, I think networking and the pair unity that comes in, into place when you talked about meeting up with other teams and having our first, you know, public event and meeting new people that come in that was interested in what we did and wanted to get into it. A lot of people investigated before on their own, either through meetup groups or paid events. Uh, but again, networking, it was nice to meet new, new people and maybe even perspective. Um, New investigators from that you never know um but yeah i think that was all that was really good yeah i agree i agree so the next the next uh thing that we have for a year in review is uh best piece of evidence best I, think piece you, of it. I think you mentioned the first one we already played it was that the the high that you and Kajo heard um naturally um by the next year and we actually were able to catch it on audio uh, I think that was by far one of the best. Um, we have recently one uh, from a private residence that we just had a few months ago, uh, just before the, the holiday season, um, where a loved one actually responded back during the portal. Yeah. 
So we can play that. Yeah, game. that would. Yeah, we'll play that right here. Say, so okay, good night, Dad. Love you. I love you. I love you. Yeah, so there it is. As you can see, it's. <laughs> Man, I'd say it was touching. It's. Uh, for me, it's amazing. You show up to some of these locations and you're like, there is no way anything's going to happen at this place. There's kids' toys out. People are, it's a, it's a normal home. There is nothing out of place. Uh, just really good homeowners, really good people. You show up and it's quiet. You're like, okay, I just drove two hours, three hours, however many hours for this, and it's a bust. But every time we do that and we get to these places and we think that, and then we get home and we review the evidence, we get things like you just heard. I mean, to have somebody's loved one come over a portal, a piece of equipment that whether you believe in it or not, or to say, I love you too, is just, I mean, I'm, my mind's blown. Yes. Yep. And it was, you know, consistent with the questions and what was being said, you know. So that, that right there is what moved me. Yeah, and another one, uh, that, that is one of my highlights of this year. Um, uh, really an unforeseen highlight. But another one that was really good, uh, we were at Harper's Ferry, and hopefully we have that clip and we'll play it right here. Yeah. Amateur. Amateur. Oh, wow. Amateur? <laughs> yeah. Wow. That was pretty, that was pretty clear too. Yeah, amateur. Well, there you go. Uh, you can hear in this clip, we were all at John Brown's um, statue, um, the monument erected for John, John Brown. And clear as day, you hear, you're a bunch of amateurs. <laughs> I mean, what do you say to that? Uh, I, I don't think I'm a bunch of, we're, we were a bunch of am, amateurs, um, but you know, it's very subjective. So we were being called out, which I thought was pretty funny. I've never been called out like that. Um, we, we've been investigating for a long time. I think we've got a lot of experience. I think we come in with very uh, sincere professionalism and uh, apparently the spirits didn't think so. So that was that was quite interesting to get uh, to get uh, a spirit to call you a, a bunch of amateurs. So uh, yeah. you just don't know what you're going to get. Um, and that's even though the portal scans radio stations, you're a bunch of amateurs. Last time I checked the radio stations, isn't a number one hit. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I agree. And hopefully we continue collecting these best pieces of evidence and bring them to you. Uh, as we as we come across them, you know. yeah. Every year, just every year, we seem to have more and more uh, mind blowing evidence that comes up. I mean, over the years, we just don't think that we can outdo ourselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, the Gettysburg evidence uh, with the gunfire and the men screaming is pretty interesting, and then you know the children crying in the basement, and we've gotten a lot of highs and hellos and. We've never been told to get out yet, not going wood. But, uh, you know, it's uh, every year it's just something different. Mm -hmm. But um, it, it's it's cool. It, I, I'm so glad we do this together. Mm -hmm. And I'm so glad we've met a lot of you and been able to continue to do it even through this pandemic. So, sure. yeah. all right. So, the next item for 2020, as we're reviewing it, is my favorite. Best piece of equipment, and it has to be a new piece of equipment that we acquired in 2020. It can't be something old and crotchety. It's got to be something new and cool. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if it's, you know, the next one we'll, you may bring up is a recycled piece of equipment, best recycled piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. um, but let's start with best new piece of equipment. Tony, go ahead. Um, I think mine truly is probably getting your wireless DVR system. I think that's helped out a few times for us this year, at the end of this year, um, especially one of the locations that we did. We we're pretty much scouting it. We wanted to collect you know, baseline evidence so we come back and say, hey, can we come back and do a broader investigation? Um, uh, so we set up uh, four 
wireless cams, left it there all weekend, was able to leave and come back to retrieve it. And uh, still going through some of that evidence, but I think just the ease of being able to set that up. We also brought it to Brunswick with us, uh, one of the new locations we did this year, the Brunswick uh, Museum. Uh, and I think that the setup and the breakdown was very quick and uh, painless. Um, so I think that piece was my favorite that I purchased this year. Um, I think there'll be locations. There'll be locations where we're used to wired DVR and the wireless at the same time. Uh, I think you know that just adds more cameras and more coverage for the locations that we go to. Yeah, I, I agree with you. That was a that was a really nice addition to to our team's equipment uh, arsenal. Mm -hmm. But the best thing about that, well, two things. One, if you're going to buy a DVR system, make sure it has sound. Yes. That was a big mistake that we made. Um, and number two, be prepared if you don't buy a wireless system of all the cable that you're going to have to buy. Uh, you may still need to buy a system that has cable because of the distance of the cameras, but uh, it is so nice to be able to break down a wireless system, basically push down the tripods, take off the cameras, throw them in the bag, and, and you're done. Right. There is no cable winding. Um, that cable winding, oh my gosh. I can't tell you how many hours we spend winding cable, taping cable to walls and under carpets. And well, I think the next location where we use the wireless, I think that might be our next video. We can tape that whole process. Oh my gosh. <laughs> we can show how it really is. So, yeah. But, and then, and then also the big thing with that is syncing the sound up to the video. Yeah. If you don't have audio in your cameras, it is a, bear to try to get the audio and the, and the video synced up because now you've got this great audio or you've got this great video and now you've got to marry the two to get them to, to, to sync up. And we've tried everything, counting, we've got cue cards, uh, everything possible. And it, it's just, it's just always a little bit off. And if there's somebody out there that knows the trick to that, please let me know because I think we've tried everything and, I think DVR systems are a must have for coverage, but good Lord, they take so much time. I mean, it's an hour setup. Uh, it's an hour breakdown, but uh, now that we've got this new wireless system, it's just, it's, it's taken us to the next level. So thanks Tony for picking that up and it's fun. I didn't have to buy it. That's the other benefit. I didn't buy it. So yay. But no, be no way I can catch up to you and your arsenal. So. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So. so, so for my, my best piece of equipment this year, you know, we, it, it, it's really tough. And even though this piece of equipment really didn't produce, excuse me, any results this year, I'd have to say it's the Paralyte. We had Jeff and Susie on, we interviewed them from North Canton Paranormal. And that Paralyte, I'm telling you, it's just top notch quality. Um, I haven't, we, we haven't gotten any evidence from it yet, but to me, that just shows how, how good of a piece of equipment it is. You can't force something. Um, the K2s, they really seem to be really sensitive. And I think a lot of folks forget they have their cell phones in their pockets. And we've noticed, and even in shows, people, um, that, that, the, the, the K2s just start flashing and going off. And I hope that they have their phones in airplane mode and they don't make a rookie mistake of, of uh, forgetting to turn their phone, their cell phones off. But that, that Paralyte is like no other. And um, I'm, I, I know we're showing a picture of it right now. And um, it's just, it, to me, it's, it's, it's one of the highlights of, of this year and to have Jeff and Susie come on and explain their thought process uh, behind that invention and I can't wait to see what they do in the future and um, hopefully we'll be able to grab some more of their equipment. I know everybody's bought everything that they've made so far. Mm -hmm. I think everybody on our team owns something that they've made, mm -hmm. um, whether it's the dowsing rods um, or the microphones that they've made. Um, to me, the, their, the, their equipment is just top notch. Mm -hmm. All right, so my, my one I just made up, the best 
recycled equipment. And this means that we already, it's an old piece of equipment, but we just, we've, we've, brought, we've brought something else into the fold and freshened it up. What's that for you, Tony? I don't want to steal your thunder, so I'm afraid if I mention the one I'm thinking of, it may be. No, it's okay. Amazing. It's okay to have the same one. I actually want to say the cat toy. I think the cat oh. toy is one of the things that you, you you picked up a long time ago. So this is a great idea. Soon afterwards, all of a sudden, it can pop up everywhere, and and uh, a few dollar item you can find at any convenience store or pet store. Now people are trying to sell it for paranormal for you know three times the price. But that simple cat toy that lights up, I think it's come in handy. Uh, we used it at one of our locations and it does it does light up. It does get activated when no one's touching it. So, Yeah, they're going up in price. If you didn't buy yours on Amazon, go out to Amazon because I think they were, you could buy three for $9. And I think now they're three for $11. So the cat people are on to us. Mm -hmm. yep. So buy them now. Mm -hmm. um, because I have a feeling that everybody buying them is going to drive the price up. So if you haven't bought them, it's the cheapest piece of equipment that you could buy. And they are so effective. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I have nine of them and I roll them out all over the floor. Mm -hmm. I'm not telling the, the spirits to hit one of them. I'm like, there's, there's every one of them, uh, touch one of them. Mm -hmm. And I got to tell you at the Apollo theater in West Virginia, Another location that we visited this year, they went off yep. several times. And because of that, several people, I'm not going to mention any names, Tracy and Ike, <laughs> they went out and bought them. Mm -hmm. So it's the cheapest thing you can buy, and it's it works so well. Yep. Yep. So we're showing that right now, what they are. Mm -hmm. Check out, go on Amazon, pick them up. They're still the cheapest piece of equipment you're going to buy. And they're pretty quality. You click a little switch, you roll it out. If it mo moves any, it, it lights up. I mean, what more can you ask for? If they were selling them for 300 bucks and they put Paranormal or, or uh, Parabol on it, everybody would want them. Mm -hmm. So this is something really inexpensive. So I encourage everybody to go out and buy it. That's a good one. That's a really good recycled piece of equipment, Tony. Yep. How about you? What do you have? Mine, of course, is the portal. It yep. keeps evolving. Yes. So when we first when we first uh, got this portal, it was like everybody else's portal. It had the, um, I can't remember the speaker, but it was a black speaker, the star speaker. It was a star speaker. They put the two foot pedals on the side. It had all the stuff that, you know, needed to be on it. Uh, and we, we lugged this thing around like a little baby. It was like Baby Yoda as we're carrying this thing around and all throughout the locations. And then we're like, man, this is a pain in the butt. So we thought we'll break it all down. We'll put it in a sack and we'll carry it around that way. And that didn't work. It, it became too cumbersome to kind of dig in the sack. And then it was dark and you didn't know what knob you were switching. And then the bag would rub again, up against the knobs and turn things off. And we thought, well, let's put it in a fanny pack because we want to go back to the 1980s. <laughs> Same thing. It became too heavy on the waist. It would rob. It was just really, it was, it was cumbersome. And then people looked at you weird because you have a fanny pack with a big speaker and two foot pedals hanging out of it. And, uh, you know, mothers were hiding children's eyes and <laughs> it was bad. So, then we thought, well, let's just break it all down even more and let's just put it inside of a, a jacket. Well, same thing, bulky, very cumbersome. We, uh, anyways, make a long story, hopefully shorter than what it's already been. We found a little Pelican case and we threw it all in the Pelican case and Velcroed it all up. And um, I think this is it. I, and, and then recently we've put sound lights in it that when the when of course the psb7 reacts to something it lights up so um hopefully we'll have uh that video well we just actually released the youtube video of that so if you haven't seen it go check that out um, but that's that's my recycled oh, it seems to be recycled from 2018 2019 and 2020 and i'm sure in 2021 we'll find something else to do to it but it's it's like the piece of equipment that just won't go away but it's uh it's 
everywhere we go, it's the most requested piece of equipment we have. Not the SLS camera, not any, you know, not the mel meters. It's the, it's the portal. Everybody wants to, for us to bring out the portal and it's just really cool. And we share how we make it. And, um, right. and it's one thing to have the SB7 or SB11, um, but when you have the portal um, hookup and everything else, it just puts that stuff on steroids. So to me, it helps drown out all the other static noise and everything else and isolate the, what's being received. So definitely the portal. Yeah. I don't know if we've ever used uh, SB items by themselves anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's been uh, it's been a real interesting piece of equipment. It's it's so cool to see how it's evolved and how we've evolved in using it. Right. Um, you know, we're, we're constantly growing and mm -hmm. evolving with our equipment. Mm -hmm. There's some equipment that you know we've spent a lot of money on and never gets used. And we're about to duplicate that same portal. Um, and build a second one so that when we're in larger locations, we're not like, you know, all joining the same, same team that we break into so we can do with that portal. Now we'll be able to have two at one location. So, um, yeah, that'll be nice. That'll be coming soon this year. So, I'm actually going to throw you, you threw that other category in. I'm actually, I mean, we were just talking about last year, we're talking about 2020, but I want to go further back. I want to talk about, and since this is our show, we can make up our own rules. Uh, I want to go back even further and pick out two of the, most extreme situations we've been into. And the first one was the first time we went to Haldeman Mansion up in PA, how cold it was. It was December 9th, I want to say 2017, 18, maybe 2018. It was cold as can be. It was after they already turned off the heat to the building. Uh, how cold did you say it got? Was it? I know we it had a only, I think it was 10 degrees, 13 degrees. I mean, amongst friends, who's counting, right? Right. But it was really cold. We had to bring a portable heater just to keep warm um, in our main, I guess, whatever you call it, our headquarters area, whatever you want, base camp, whatever you want to call it. We're all huddling just to get by the heat. Um, but it was really, really cold. Uh, I know some of us left around 3 a.m. I think the other group of us left around 5 a.m. Um, but I left early. <laughs> you know, I time. left early. But uh, it, uh, it was really extreme cold weather. It's the things that we go through to bring the evidence that we have to everybody else. Um, also, the other extreme, uh, you and I did an old mill in Pennsylvania, and that was the exact opposite. I, don't, I think we released one clip from that as behind the scenes where we're running around and it looks like we just jumped out of the shower with our clothes on. It was so hot. I mean, inside this old mill, I believe it had to hit at least 100 degrees. It was bad. It was over 100. It was, I, I would, I'm not exaggerating, but it had to be at least 110. And we didn't drink enough water, I think. Um, but yeah, I lost a lot of water weight that that weekend. <laughs> May have to go there after every holiday just to burn off some extra fat. But yeah, it was a good it was a good Jenny Craig uh, <laughs> location. Yeah. There is two of our extreme ones that I recall right now. Since we're going back in time, trying to pick out the, the highlights of of map and things that we've been through, and I think those two should be up there. Um, things that we'll do and. Um, We'll probably do it again if the opportunity came along just so that we can have that experience. Yeah. You know, I'm going to bring up something else since it is our show. <laughs> um, you know, one of the things that we've introduced this year is interviews. We've tried to interview inventors. We've tried to interview other investigators. And I'm not going to, I'm not going to ask you and I'm not going to give who my, our best guest is because I think, everybody's been a really good guest. I mean, we've had, I just mentioned uh, uh, Jeff and Susie from North Canton. Um, we had, um, I can't remember the guy, Matt, I think from the pie, did the pie equipment. Yep. Um, and we've had others on the, on, on, on the, sh on the show. Um, we had the special. Yep. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, I'm just so thankful that, a lot of these folks have come on and shared their experiences with us, share their equipment with us. They don't have to do that. Mm -hmm. And we don't get paid by the way. We don't, we don't get any free equipment. Um, right. It's just really to, to bring a lot of uh, that knowledge to, to, you know, to you guys and to what we do um, because we've, we've learned a lot from, from these interviews and how things are truly meant to, to be used um, in the equipment that these folks build. So mm -hmm. we're hoping in 2021, this year, we can really just bring it to that next level and have a lot more 
guest and um, we're not looking to be paranormal pod sh- podcast host. Um, but during the pandemic, you know, we're sitting at home. Why not do something? So um, we want to learn and keep our knowledge growing. And, and uh, this, this past year was just really, I think one of the coolest things was meeting some of these folks and we're hoping to get out and, and investigate with some of them. Um, I love to go out and investigate with, with uh, some of these folks and seeing how they use their equipment they've invented in the real world. So hopefully uh, after the pandemic uh, is over this year, we can, we can head out to some of these locations. I know MAP is going to do something in 2021 that we probably thought we'd never do is we're going to head outside of the Mid-Atlantic and we're going to start going to other states. So um, I know a couple of years ago that uh, I ventured into Indiana um, and that was because my family lives there. Um, so that really wasn't a, a stretch, um, but we're going to actually be going to states that nobody that we know lives in, in some of these states. So um, we've already got those things set up and we can't wait to show you this year where we're going to end up. Um, if, if you have a location that you'd like us to come visit, or like to have us investigate with you, reach out to us. We're all about para unity. I know a lot of groups say that, but we truly mean it. We're all about sharing. If there's something you'd like to, to investigate in Maryland, Delaware, uh, let us know. Uh, if we get something on the books, uh, you never know. We might, we might uh, reach out to you and invite you to, to one of our events. So. Yep. Sounds good. We're also going to be starting up new content from social media. Instagram, Facebook is going to be completely separate from our YouTube, um, um, I guess, post. Um, if you have ideas that you would like to see, please, uh, by all means, send us. We'll have uh, an email address uh, that says uh, eat video. Uh, so you can give us some suggestions of what you'd like to see more of. Um, but we are going to keep things separate now. Maybe some teasers out there on social media to lead you to YouTube. But our content is definitely going to be shaped up and structured a little differently going forward. Uh, we've had a lot of time to sit back and think about it and structure it. So 2021 will be bringing a new public eye to what we do uh, with MAP. Yeah, subscribe to YouTube. Hit that. <coughs> Excuse me, I'm getting all choked up about it. Uh, hit that uh, Hit that subscribe button. Hit that bell. So the minute our content's up there, um, we're going to come to you weekly. Um, we really want to be out there and, and bringing you uh, um, content that really means something to the paranormal world. We're not going to make it long. It's going to be short little clips. Mm-hmm. It's going to be tech tips. It's going to be interviews. It's going to be, you know, guest interviews of uh, fellow paranormal investigators. Uh, we really want to bring you a lot of cool content. We're not going to try to replicate what everybody else is doing. This is going to be totally different. Um, so if you have ideas, you're like, man, I always wanted to know blank be blank. Let us know. We'll do the research and we'll bring it to you. Mm-hmm. Correct. Yep. Yeah, we're looking forward to this year. Um, things are going to clean up, things are going to clear up, and we're going to get out there more. Um, so hopefully we'll see you along the way. Yeah, absolutely. We look forward to it. Well, thank you for joining us today. Um, please share. Uh, again, remember to select the uh, like button, subscribe button, and ring that bell. And uh, we'll be coming back to you very shortly. Thank you very much. Thanks, guys.